Are you thinking about quitting your job, but you're losing sleep over it? Today, I'm gonna to offer you first a few diagnostic questions to help you think about how you're quitting your job, and then I'll offer five tips on how to do so without burning bridges. I'm Bob Bourdon. I'm a senior fellow at Harvard Law School. I'm the founder and former director of Harvard Law School's Negotiation and Mediation Clinical Program. I taught negotiation, conflict resolution, mediation, and many other courses at Harvard Law School for more than two decades. And I'm a founder and principal of the Cambridge Negotiation Institute. So my first diagnostic question is really to ask yourself, what is the reason for your quitting? And I wanna suggest broadly that people tend to have two big sets of reasons for why they're quitting their job. Reason number one, they're quitting their job because there's been something better that has come along for them or frankly, something out of their control that is bad or not so good that has happened in their life. So what do I mean here? Well, if you just got a really big promotion either internally or externally, that's like a really good thing in your life. Or maybe your spouse just got their dream job, but you live in DC and their job is in Indianapolis. That's a pretty good reason for you to leave your job. Maybe it's a not so good thing that's out of your control. Like for example, you have an elderly parent who now needs more acute care and your current job requires just way too much travel. If the reasons why you need to quit fall into those kinds of categories and you're still losing sleep, I want to suggest to you that the big work you need to do is internal. And from the coaching work I've done through the years, lots of people fall into this category. So what do I mean by internal? Well, they're tied up, they're losing sleep because they feel bad or they feel guilty and they really like their colleagues, or they like their boss, or they like the work they're doing, and they feel like they're disappointing, or they're letting someone down. And I'm very affiliative, I get that. At the same time, these are very legitimate reasons for leaving a job. And anybody on the other side of that conversation is gonna be appreciative, supportive, and thankful for the contributions you've made and the directness you've shown in leaving. And so if you're feeling torn up about it, I would just say do all the work you can in advance to feel justified and okay. And when you do raise it, if you're still feeling torn up about it, simply be transparent. Say, you know, on the one hand, I feel terrible about this. I feel guilty about this. On the other hand, this is really important for and list the reasons. Now, there's a second set of reasons why sometimes people are quitting their job. And it's not because they have an in-law who needs care in Atlanta. And it's not because they just got a big brand new job. It's because frankly, they hate their job or they work in a poisonous working environment. So whether your reason for leaving is that you have a great new job or frankly you just hate your current one, here are four pieces of advice that can help you do it as effectively as you can and still maintain the relationships that matter to you. First piece of advice is simply to be appreciative of the experience you've had in your current job. No matter how bad your job is, you've had some experience and there's some way in which you could be appreciative. And one of the things we know from research done by Roger Fisher and Dan Shapiro is that every human being has a core emotional interest in feeling appreciated. So just expressing that is helpful. Second and relatedly, no matter how bad this job was, find one or two things that you can genuinely name and be positive about. Third, as you're leaving, Make a firm commitment to do all you can to ensure a smooth transition. So what might that look like? Well, first, if at all possible, giving as much notice as you can. Many times people are thinking about leaving for months and months, and then they decide to give two weeks notice. And I get it, that's standard, that's kind of what's required. On the other hand, from an employer perspective, having more notice is incredibly helpful because it gives that manager a chance to find somebody and have the smoothest possible transition. 
Let me make an important caveat here. If you're in a workplace where things are truly poisonous and your mental or physical health is at risk, then you need to leave as soon as possible. And this ample notice advice should be disregarded. I am talking more about the situation where you're like not liking the job and it's kind of unpleasant or the work is doldrums and your boss is kind of a jerk, not a situation of genuine abuse or trauma or harassment. So imagining we're more in the unpleasant situation or we just got a promotion, the second thing I want to say that is related to smooth transition is putting in 100% of your commitment to the very end. So what that means is avoiding a quiet quitting or pre-quitting approach. As someone who has been a manager of employees for many years, I have to tell you one of the sure ways to burn a bridge is to announce that you're leaving and then put in half your effort for the next two months. As a manager, you notice that. And what goes into your mind is, okay, now I've really learned about this person. This person isn't totally devoted. They're kind of just phoning it in and it really can hurt the relationship. In fact, even to this day, some of the people that I continue to work with, continue to send business to, are people who, when they announced that they were leaving for another opportunity, continue to put in 100% effort. Remember, if they're still paying you your full salary, you still owe them your full effort. Lastly, if you want to maintain the relationship, if you want to avoid burning a bridge, be explicit about your interest in continuing a connection or a relationship after you leave, and then actually follow up. So what does that look like? Well, first, be sure that when you leave, you provide your contact information. Second, make a commitment to yourself and maybe even put it into your calendar that within six months, you will reach out to your colleagues in some way. Maybe it's asking them to lunch. Maybe it's saying something you appreciated about the workplace that you don't have now. Maybe it's something that at the time you didn't appreciate, but do now. Let me share with you a real story of an employee who came back to me in a way that not only didn't burn the bridge, it actually built it for a future relationship that continues to this day. In fact, me and this person are now colleagues who work together all the time. So this is an employee um, with whom I had some strife during the time he was working for me. We had occasional conflicts. It wasn't a lot of fun. I, offered, gave, I often gave this person feedback that was ignored. And when he finally quit, I would say we left on amicable terms, but not the best terms. Despite some of the challenges, this colleague did actually follow so much of the advice I provided here. They expressed an interest in staying in touch. They reached out. They worked 100% to the very last day. And they gave me ample notice before they left. But here's what really sealed the deal to move from just maintaining a bridge to really building a stronger one. About eight months after they left, I had a conversation with this person. Actually, he reached out to me. And he said, I want to apologize and thank you. I thought, okay, for what? And he said, you know, during the time we worked together, on many occasions, you gave me feedback about my timeliness. And every single time you did that, I thought you were being annoying. And frankly, I usually ignored that advice. Now that I'm in my new place of work, I'm getting the same exact feedback. And what I realized is that you were actually trying to help me. And I want to say thank you. I wish I had taken that advice because past people I had worked with never bothered to give that to me. And now I'm paying for it in my current workplace. That coming back and thanking me was hugely valuable for helping us build an ongoing professional and personal relationship together. So all totaled, quitting can always be hard. If the reason why you're quitting is you have a great new opportunity or something that is out of your control that you have to address and you're still feeling torn up about it, do some internal work about putting that guilt aside. If your colleagues truly care about you, they're gonna be happy that you got the promotion and they're gonna be empathic because you have to leave for the bad reason. If on the other hand, you're leaving because you've just had it with this job, be confident of your own decision and as you leave, express appreciation for wherever you can, give ample time for them to find a replacement, work 100% till the very end, 
And if you want to, reach out after you've left to keep the connections alive. If you have a story of maintaining a bridge after quitting, I'd love to hear about that in the comments section below. So to build upon effective communication skills in the workplace, watch this next video, The Art of Persuasion for Professional Success. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and ring the bell so you never miss new information about how to be the best communicator you can. Okay, it's not difficult to keep watching. Click, click.